Well, good evening. So glad to see um, all of you. I know we have a few people kind of uh, standing in the back. We're slowly kind of making our way in. Maybe if we want to kind of slowly start to settle in, there's plenty of seats up in the front. Um, good Catholic. We're, listen, we're not celebrating Mass, so you can come up in the front. I know, some, I know some of you, um, as we're kind of settling in, I know some of you were asking if we were streaming tonight. Uh, for those of you, uh, maybe you have some loved ones or just maybe your spouses that couldn't make it tonight. We are going to record tonight, so everything um, is going to be recorded. And we'll have a link uh, for any of you who maybe want to um, send a link uh, to family, friends, uh, spouses, what have you. We're going to go ahead and uh, start tonight with a prayer. I want to ask... Um, of our trustees, Miss Nancy Trahan, to lead us in prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we offer you all glory and praise for our beautiful church parish and for all the blessings we have seen over the last few years. We offer our thanksgiving to you for the success of our most recent building campaign. We are so grateful that you opened the hearts of our parishioners who generously donated to this worthy cause. We ask for the grace to keep our mission top of mind in tonight's discussion. We are committed to helping others encounter you and to become missionary disciples as you have instructed us to do. We ask the Holy Spirit to help us see the plan you have for us clearly and optimistically. And I ask everyone to join me in the Come Holy Spirit prayer. Come Holy Spirit. Fill the, the hearts, hearts of your faithful, faithful and, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, thank you all for coming uh, tonight. Really, tonight is um, really an opportunity for us to be um, transparent, to kind of give you an update on where we are. Hopefully, you've been hearing um, over the last uh, months and even year, um, us giving you like slow updates um, at Mass and maybe most recently, the recent update with maybe the uh, contractor cost and the, the heightened cost of that. We're, um, we're going to kind of work through a, a brief presentation and then we'll have some opportunity for Q&A at the end, some question and answer. Um, so just be kind of thinking about some questions that you may have. At the end of the pew, um, there's some opportunity. Um, if you want to write down your question, you can write down or if you want to, um, we'll have some opportunity with the microphone if you want to ask that question at the end. So we'll just kind of make our way. Hopefully we'll answer most of your questions uh, with the presentation, but Again, you may have some questions that we don't touch on. Um, for those of you who maybe have no idea uh, what we're talking about, we're going to kind of give a little history about um, how we got to today, how we got to the present day and our project and, and where we are. So bear with me if, if you know all of the history of how we got to this project. Um, just a refresher for everyone to get on the same page. We just have people joining our parish at different points in the phase, so uh, hopefully this is helpful to you. Um, how did we get here? <clears throat> Back in uh, 2016, if you remember, um, the bishop uh, did a centennial capital campaign. Uh, he was looking at the needs of our, our diocese, and he wanted to do a campaign throughout the diocese. And he said, basically, he gave us a goal, and he said, uh, your parish can keep 30% of the proceeds of the centennial campaign. Um, we got together with our parish council, and he basically said, you have to really allocate that money towards a project or two. We got together with our parish council and basically prayed about the needs of our parish. And um, what we surfaced as the greatest need of our parish at the time was our youth. And so we allocated uh, a large portion of that 30% that we were getting towards a youth house. We were going to build a youth house. And so um, what we did um, back then is we basically put together um, a youth house committee. Um, basically, okay, what do we need? get some assessment, talk to our youth minister, talk to different places around, um, how are you guys meeting the need of the youth? 
Uh, we came up with a plan. We brought that plan to uh, the parish council. And as we were talking about the youth house, um, what surfaced in the parish council was that, you know, we, youth house is a need that we have, but we also have other needs in the parish. So if we're going to build a youth house, why don't we, um, maybe to save costs, why don't we build all of our needs in one, maybe a larger building. So we started to talk about the other needs that we have in our parish, and that's when the multi-purpose building kind of surfaced back in 2018. Um, so we said, okay, these are the needs that we see as a parish council. Um, youth house, maybe multi-purpose building. Why don't we go to the parish and kind of get... Um, hear from you about maybe, maybe you see some needs that we don't see. And so we did a needs assessment. Um, I don't know if you remember that. Um, we, we came up with like a top 10 list of needs and then we began to prioritize them. Um, then we put together a building committee. We got a building committee together and said, okay, uh, we're not sure if we can do all of this, but we took all of our needs and we put them on paper and then we um, got together with an architect. Um, Chad Abel and his uh, architectural firm, and we started just to put together some drawings to try to fit the needs of all the top 10 that we surfaced. And then we had, uh, back in 2019, we had two town hall meetings. I don't know if you remember that. We basically had them in the PLC. We presented what we have done already before. Um, got some good feedback, had Q&A then. Um, then we went to the drawing board, um, sit, gave that off to the uh, architectural firm, and then we put together a package uh, called the One Heart Campaign. Um, we were so privileged and excited to have um, Stuller give us um, a $1 million match. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, later and all the, the finances. But we started a One Heart Campaign, and that'll kind of bring us to today. So just a little history. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, this whole process started back in 2016 when we started talking about a youth house, and it's been uh, we're down now in 2022. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a process. Um, just to kind of give you an idea on, on why we're having this conversation, I um, just want to give you maybe some statistics that are happening in our parish that maybe you're aware of or maybe you might not be aware of. Um, I think these are beautiful things. Our parish is, is growing, and hopefully uh, these statistics will show you how much we're growing. Over the past five years, over the past five years, we've had 489 new families join our parish. Uh, when you kind of look at the numbers, uh, it actually equals to uh, 1,371 new parishioners that have joined our parish. Um, just five years. Um, that's beautiful uh, to think about. When we kind of zero in on our teens, um, in the year 2020, we had uh, 67 teens in our Life Teen program. Uh, this past year, we had 109 teens in our youth program. So as we kind of think about, you know, a youth house and why we need a youth house, hopefully you can see a little bit of growth, 65% increase. Um, baptisms, I'm always super excited when I talk about this in Mass. Um, it's, it's quite astounding how many children we are baptizing in our parish. Over the last four years, we baptized 506 children. I just want you to maybe just think about that. Um, four years, 506 children. So in 12 and 13, 14 years from now, those 506 kids are going to be teenagers, right? Uh, they're going to be teenagers in our parish. So hopefully um, they're going to be looking for a place to stay, looking for a place to grow. Um, and it will certainly be our responsibility to really meet them and serve them and, and keep them close to home to, to grow. We have a wonderful school for that. And, and, and certainly, as you can, we talk about this youth house and this opportunity. Some other things that are happening in our parish. Um, you may have noticed we, we kind of... Um, we have this talk about doing things in between Sundays so that we can grow in our relationship with the Lord. Um, we have formation nights. We have encounter nights. Um, and our main kind of evangelical driver, our engine, I would say, is small groups. Um, if you've been at Mass, you've heard us talk about small groups. We've been encouraging small groups. Um, it's really a wonderful opportunity for people to grow in their faith. Um, formation nights. It's a beautiful thing we have over in the PLC, primarily uh, our, our largest gathering space. 
Um, from May 19, 2019, we had 75 people join our um, formation night. Um, just a little bit of growth, like in July 2021, we had 100 people um, join our formation night. I think more people are hearing about it, more people are enjoying it. Uh, we try to um, have a good night, a good topic. So you can see the increase, 33% increase, and we're putting all those people in the Parish Life Center. Our encounter nights, we had you know 128 compared to 165 in October. Again, an increase. Um, I think the one thing that's kind of most exciting, and as we kind of got together with the parish council and talked about, okay, what's our evangelical plan? What's our pastoral plan here in the parish? Our major pastoral plan is to um, welcome people into these small groups. And we talked about growth, but we just talked about it. In one year, from the fall of 2020 to the fall of 2022, um, we had a 218% increase in people in small groups. So in 2020, we had a two, 207 people in small groups. This past fall, we had 260, uh, sorry, 659 people in small groups. So um, hopefully this shows you like what we're doing is, is being effective. People are joining what we're doing. They're engaging. Uh, I think they're interested in growth and that's exciting. Um, but I think our conversation tonight is how are we going to be responsible with that growth, right? Just to give you some kind of perspective, um, our, our Parish Life Center, uh, the capacity is around 130. Um, if you really want standing room only, it's about 150 people. Those of you who have been to our formation nights, um, our encounter nights, and our, our dinners, uh, you've seen maybe when we are standing room only. Um, Looking at these numbers and just our need, if we were really to have um, just continued growth, you could see how our continued growth would begin to press in on that 130. And certainly if we would want to have like a parish-wide event over on our, our, our Saint, uh, Sacred Heart campus, um, you could see how that 130 or 150 would be, would be pushing. So just an idea, as we look to the, new, the drawings that we're going to show you, uh, the capacity for those drawings, we're looking at multi-purpose, that's 464, and uh, the youth house would hold about 190 kids. Um, so just giving you, I know I'm giving you a lot of stats, um, but hopefully it's a, um, a celebration. Let's see if I can get back where we are. Okay. I am going to um, hand off uh, the numbers uh, to Mr. Chuck Soprano. Mr. Chuck Soprano is, um, he's head, he's chair of our finance committee here in the parish. He's been with this project from the beginning. Um, to let him fool you, he's not only uh, chair of the finance council, he's also on the parish council. He's also on the building committee that has been walking through this. Um, and he's also on the fundraising committee. So uh, I can't be held responsible for what Chuck says. He may ask you for money tonight. Um, in fact, I hope he does ask you for money. Oh, you're ready. You are. Sorry. Snick up on me. Yeah, go for it. Good evening. Uh, <laughs> Is that thing on? Yeah. Okay. I get to do the dirty work. He didn't want to talk about numbers, of course, and so that's why I'm here. Um, but officially, I'm just here to retire from all my committees tonight. So that's really why I'm here, Father. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so a as you see, uh, back in, uh, when we first started this in 19 and actually broke it to everybody right before COVID hit is when we, it was gonna be our first weekend to actually announce the Stoller match. Uh, we had a goal of three and a half million dollars to raise for the building project of, and, and all that was included. That was from parish council, that was from finance committee. That's what we thought we could build the building for uh, within the budget that we had from a parish. Um, so we started the One Heart campaign. We had this dollar match of a million dollars. Uh, the parish has pledged $2.48 million so far. And of that, we've collected 66% of it. So we have 1.6 million of that in hand. So we've raised uh, over the last two years with COVID and everything else, as you see, $3.488 million, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, it, it's been great that we have achieved that goal Unfortunately, with COVID, as we all know, prices have skyrocketed. Wood is outrageous, steel is outrageous, labor is outrageous in building. Um, 
so I get to be the bearer of bad news here. Uh, so when we went out for bid the other day, uh, which was in October, um, the architect's opinion, they thought we were still going to come in around that 3.5 number. The actual bids came in all in, as you see, from 5.1 to $5.7 million. That had nothing to do with the building. The building did not change. The square footage did not change. We didn't add anything to the project from day one to day now. That is purely materials and labor. That's just inflation of the cost of the product, unfortunately. So this is kind of where we are today. Uh, the, the, the lowest bid, which was uh, manual builders commercial, uh, came in all in for 5.158, as you see up there. That's everything. That's the youth house, that's a multi-purpose, that's redesigning parking, that's covered walkways, that's covered drive-through, uh, that's absolutely everything. Um, we have about 700,000, as you see, FF and E miscellaneous costs. That is fixtures, that's you know tables, chairs, um, that's the kitchen equipment is included in there, landscaping's included in there. So that's all the extras that's not in the actual building price. So all in, you see we're at $5.8 million. We've been working with Manuel the last, uh, this past week, and how do we reduce it? What can we find? Where can we value engineer? And we've come up with already about $400,000. A lot of that was they just went out and rebid the product to uh, different um, contractors, uh, subcontractors, and we were able to shave off about $400,000 already. There's about another 300 that we think we can um, shave off as well. There's still some areas that they didn't have time to get to from a value and engineering standpoint. So we're hoping we can drop it down back to that original 5.158 um, number. Including the one heart funds, you see the remaining balance on that is 1.658, 1,658,000. Uh, so that's where we are today. Um, where do we go from here? How do we get that? I know that's on everybody's mind and heart. At least I would assume it would be. Um, of course, we go back and ask for more money. Always an option. We do, as a parish, have the funds to finance this with no debt. But in the same breath, that would eliminate the majority of our savings of what we have at the parish, which is not um, our first option of what we want to do. Uh, and we'll get more of that in the Q&A also. That's, it. That's what I have from the 10,000 foot view of numbers. We'll dig in a little bit deeper later. Father's gonna finish up with some more data. Sure. So um, just to give you a reminder, um, th these are just the renderings that we presented. Um, it, it, they're in the Narthex. Uh, these are the renderings that you've been able to see uh, kind of from the beginning. Uh, the top left is kind of an angle from um, the church side or maybe uh, kind of the rectory fence side looking at the building. Uh, so that would be the top left would be the multi-purpose entrance. And then the bottom right would be kind of the youth house, um, which would be on railroad, um, kind of off of railroad street. Uh, I'll give you a little drawing um, right here. So this is the interior. I know this might be hard to see for, for some of you. This is the interior of the building. Um, I'll kind of walk you through kind of what, what are we looking at right here. So at the bottom left, uh, bottom left would be the entrance, um, and again, I apologize for, for the detail of it, would be the entrance into the multi-purpose building. So it's, uh, there's a nice foyer area, it would be kind of like our narthex here in church, just a gathering space uh, for the events that we would have. You would enter in through the bottom left, and you would kind of walk in, I don't know if you can see that kind of, um, that line, that dotted line. And if you would walk up into the main room, up in the top middle, um, those little circles or like tables, kind of um, um, dinner style tables uh, that you could fit eight people. Um, that would be our multi-purpose, our large gathering space. Uh, the capacity in there is 464 people. Um, so that would be the space that we would be kind of looking at for multi-purpose. Um, if you kind of go to the right, so we're moving from top middle to top kind of right, moving those little black um, 
squares, that would be the industrial kitchen. We kind of got together with the Knights of Columbus um, and kind of asked them to help us design our industrial kitchen. Um, and they kind of put together all the things that they would like to see a lot, kind of mimics um, what they've been using over in the uh, St. Cecilia gym. Um, so with the help of the Knights, we kind of designed an industrial kitchen that we think will serve our parish uh, on into the future. Um, if you go all the way to the right, kind of probably a third of this drawing on the right is the youth house. Um, so um, the youth house will have its own separate entrance, the bottom right. Uh, it'll have like a smaller gathering space. And then you walk in, it'll have a little small gathering room, meeting room, where we can do uh, Bible studies. We can do like small group, uh, 10, 12 um, 16 kids, and then there'll be a large gathering, a, a large space that will have, again, that 190 capacity, and then on the outside, we're going to have a little fenced-in um, backyard area. There'll be a little fireplace. There'll be just a gathering. You can play cornhole. You can lose to me in cornhole as many times as you would like. Um, there'll be darts and different things like that, so um, they have their own restroom uh, facility over on the youth um, side. And there's also a little office for, um, for our youth minister. If you kind of work your way back to the front, um, let's, let's go back through the entrance. So the bottom left entrance, if you don't go into the main um, meeting hall space and you take a right, there's a little hallway so the bottom of the screen, there's two meeting spaces um, that are primarily designed for like um, our, our small groups. So uh, small groups, I know there's Come Lord Jesus, there's a lot of Come Lord Jesus groups and different various small groups that um, are starting to tax um, the present meeting spaces we have on campus. So if you know you're in a small group, um, it's, it's very difficult sometimes to schedule small group uh, meeting spaces here. And then there's a child care facility um, third from the left um, that we will be using. Um, we can use it during mass, like here. Our, our, our child care facility here is pretty small. Um, and with 506 kids that we're baptizing, um, the, the need is going to kind of be escalating. So um, we'll have a, a child care facility there we can use during mass or we can use during events um, in this building. And finally, for those of you who get excited about bathrooms, um, the top left, uh, we have a really nice um, separate male and female uh, bathroom that I think will be fitting for this space. Um, just a nice restroom. So that's kind of the layout of the multi-purpose building, and certainly we can a answer any questions that you may have about that. Um, this is a kind of larger scale, and I apologize, I don't, um, I don't have a, a pointer, so, or the pointer doesn't work on this screen, so just bear with me. The, the multi-purpose building that I showed you is um, on the right side, kind of with the green. Uh, this project also includes adding 36 new parking spots. So uh, we're going to add some parking between the church and uh, the multi-purpose building. So new parking spots back here, which will include, um, I don't know if you see where that f uh, fire truck access, they have some um, handicap parking. Uh, the handicap parking will be near a covered drop-off. Um, so now in the rain, on rainy days, you'll have a place to uh, come and drop off your loved one under You'll be completely covered from the drop-off, and there'll be a walkway to church right behind here, and you can walk in through this back door. Um, everything will be handicap uh, accessible. So super excited about that. That's, that is part of this larger project when you consider that big price tag. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, I know there's, there's certainly some more things that we can uh, talk about, but wanted that to be... Um, maybe communicated. I know you may have some questions, so um, think about your questions. If, uh, if you would not like to ask your question on the microphone, I'm going to give uh, a few minutes for you to write down your question. Um, I have some, um, some note cards at the end of your pew. Just give me a few minutes to write it down, and then um, we'll have someone come by with the offertory basket. Uh, if you don't have a question, you just want to put a couple of dollar bills in there um, or some checks, we certainly will welcome that. I, will, I won't read those out, um, except if like they're really worth it. Like if some of you has like a big, big check and we don't have, we can just skip this whole conversation. We can just, you can just say go for it. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, 
I tell you what, what we'll do is um, write down your question, um, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll pick up the, the cards with the question, and then we'll answer the, the questions on the card, and it may actually answer some of the questions that you have. If we don't answer the questions, then we'll do a Q&A um, open mic after that, and we'll kind of move from there. So a couple of minutes, please. What's that? Mr. MP. I'm just going to give everybody a few minutes to write down their question on the card, and then I'm going to collect the questions, and then we'll do a little Q&A. How about that? Uh huh. Yeah. Would, would, you mind, would you mind just maybe holding that off for just a few minutes? And I promise, I promise I'm going to get to you um, just so that we can respect everybody's time. I'm going to get to you. Hold on. Just a few minutes. I want to give everybody a little bit of time. And just as we, uh, we're kind of thinking, I do have Chad Abel. Chad, so Chad is here um, representing the architectural firm. And uh, Chad will be able to help us with um, maybe any questions we might have um, architecturally. Uh, Chad, is Derek, is Derek anybody here from? Um, OK. So Chad might have some questions uh, when it comes to inflation or uh, maybe f I know we've had a lot of questions about um, the percentage of, of inflation and is it going up, is it going down? Chuck's the expert on the stock market. Chuck can actually tell you when the stock market's going to go down and up and what day it's going to go down and up. And by how much. So if we want to all time it right. Yeah, I just um, I just start going ahead and um, what we do is I, I know a lot of these might be redundant, so um, Chuck's trying to uh, put together similar questions. Um, so first question: uh, steel or wood frame? Um, right now we're going steel. Um, we have talked about wood um, to to cut some of the cost. Again, we're trying to to balance. Um, we're talking to the contractor, we're talking to Chad, functionality versus longevity versus kind of what can we afford. Um, again, I know if I've, I've talked to you guys about 3.5. I don't want to put us in a financial bind. And so um, just trying to balance. And right now, wood was super cheap. Not, not, sorry. Uh, wood, was <laughs> wood was going down, so it was cheaper to replace um, the steel we had with wood, but as of, as of January 1st, wood went back up 55%, and so now it's, you know, wood's almost not even that much cheaper. So right now we have a steel structure in place presently. Um, when will the, um, when will the leaking, uh, when will the leaking church roof be fixed? Um, great question. Um, well, I tell you what I do, um, what I'll do is, I know there's going to be a lot of tangents that we might go um, 
into that don't apply to the building project, I'm just gonna put those on the side. And then once we finish up our conversation, those of you who wanna stay after to, to talk about a lot of the extra things, we will certainly stay after and address those. So. Sure. I promise you I'm going to get to it. Um, no, no, no. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. How large is the meeting? Versus the PLC. Oh, how oh how large how large is um how large is the meeting space versus the present PLC? Um, like like physical. I'm um, guess that's probably physical. I know the capacity. Almost twice the size. So, um, which really I don't know if that translates. So, um, capacity one thirty to one fifty. The capacity here is uh, four. What did I say? Four eighty, four ninety, four sixty. So. That, yeah, that would be chairs. 480 would be chairs. The circle table is probably like 360. Um, so maybe we could get some numbers on the actual dimension of it. Um, why was the project delayed until now? Reason for not starting earlier. Great. Um, I guess a few, few ways I can answer that. Um, one thing I can tell you why um, it wasn't started my hopes was to, to break ground, gosh, I think in, in October. Because um, I sent, I think I sent um, some of you some letters saying, super excited, we're going to be breaking ground. We were excited. Um, when I got that number 5.1 back, um, it, took a, it took a while for my heart to, to catch up to my brain. Um, so I honestly put it on pause and um, had to digest it. And I was not ready to move forward with that given all that I've communicated to you guys. Um, I went to the parish council and the finance council. They actually, we had, a, we had a two hour discussion. And so the parish council, finance council and building committee were all together in one room. We talked about the numbers, we went back and forth. And basically they all um, collectively um, advised me to go forward with the project. So they said, look, Father, um, inflation's coming. This building is not getting any cheaper. So the longer we wait, the more expensive it's gonna be. Let's pull the trigger now. Um, so they advised me to do that. I personally, just in my own prayer, um, I wanted to get more feedback from you. Um, I wanted to tell you about the project. I wanted to be absolutely transparent. I wanted us to have this opportunity to have a conversation, to hear where you were. Um, I didn't want to move forward without your support or without at least you knowing what was happening. Um, I didn't want to put us, at some point, I didn't even know if we were going to be in debt. I didn't want to um, just move us forward without being completely transparent um, and having you know. So why didn't we go? Uh, I can answer that question um, why didn't we do this in October? Because I had a little bit of sticker shock and I wanted us all to be on the same page. Why we didn't do it before then, um, well, to be quite honest with you, um, COVID happened and uh, COVID, I was just really uncertain when the COVID situation happened. I didn't know what was gonna happen. If anyone was gonna come back to church, if half the people were gonna come back to church, if we were gonna have more people come back to church. Um, we were really focused on just meeting you guys where they were. We actually put the project on pause. I, I called Chad and said, Chad, I don't know where we're gonna be financially. I have no idea. I, I'm definitely not in a place of committing our funds to this project when we're not even coming to church. So um, we, we had like a six month pause on the project just because of COVID. And what I was doing was I was waiting to see, okay, how are people coming back? We, we kept watching the numbers, not only uh, people in the pews, but also offertory. So we've been watching offertory. We don't want to put ourselves in a bind financially um, with a building when our offertory um, isn't going to come back to maybe meet our budget. 
our operating budget. So we've been watching all that, and I've been waiting for some stability in that regard, uh, which I think is the most responsible thing to do, and I, I trust that it's the best thing to do. So hopefully that answers uh, your question. Um, hindsight, cer certainly it would have been better and more economically feasible to do this two years ago, but two years ago, um, hopefully you can remember we were in a very unstable space, and I just wasn't in a place to do it. Um, option, uh, option one, raise more money. Option two, spend savings. I'm not, um, I don't know what to do with that. Option three. Uh, option, what's option three? I don't know. Oh, so what's option three? Um, uh, I guess not do the project at all. Uh, that's an option. So raise more money, spend savings. I don't know, I'm open to other options. You give me all the money. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know. Um, maybe we could talk about that. Like, what? What? What would be some other options? Um, value. Okay, value engineering uh, is typically a team associated with removal of things from a project. How much of the reductions are due to decreased pricing versus removing things? So. Um, Maybe you can help out with this, but I know, I know we definitely, without touching anything, without touching anything, we, s we save, I know, directly 120000 with just rebidding. And then um, without touching anything else, we had like a few things that we... Yeah, uh, the, the 300000 that was mentioned earlier it was not losing anything. Uh, 115, like you mentioned, was just rebidding the project for certain subcontractors. Uh, some of the other things was uh, relocating AC units closer to where the ductwork was. We're saving money on ductwork and running stuff. Um, you know, that was uh, $25,000. Uh, we were able to reduce the performance bond. Uh, we were able to get that cut. That was $10,000. Um, Value engineering, the electrical, just redesigning some of the electrical system. Instead of using Saved copper, we use uh, thirteen thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, so the 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 big number of three hundred so far was not cutting anything, was not taking anything out, um, and and the other we're we're still working because the whole building wasn't examined in time for the meeting tonight. They're still doing. It. In fact, I, I saw the. Uh, contractor uh, was sending emails tonight, still working on some of the other areas. So we're still digging. That's just was the easy cuts without having to do too much work so far. Yeah, great. Um, just kind of keep um, working through these questions. These are, these are great. Um, so the One Heart campaign, is, is it separate from the Centennial funds? And what's the timing of the Centennial campaign funds? So um, just a reminder that the Centennial funds started before the One Heart campaign, but because we had allocated, the Parish Council had allocated specifically 250,000 of the Centennial funds for a youth house. Because the project includes a youth house, we put that 250,000 in um, the, the One Heart campaign. So it is in the money that we said we have raised for the youth house. So um, it's not, 250 in addition to the 3.5 we've raised. We actually put it in there. Um, hopefully that, that, that helps. Why not, why not use some of the church's funds? Um, that, that's kind of in, in maybe the option two that we talked about. Um, the, the church funds would be uh, dipping into the savings. Um, what we have left at 1.65 um, one of the options, if we don't raise the money, would be dipping into the church funds. We do have savings that would cover that, so we can do that. Uh, that's an option, just to let you guys know that we can do that. Can we size the scale back in a way, um, it, and it, or it can, it can be built later. In a way, it can be built later. Um, I'm a little worried about um, scaling the size back, simply because um, if, we, if, we, if we begin to uh, downscale, if that's a word, um, what we might end up doing is, is spending a lot of money and investing on a building that doesn't serve our growth. In other words, we're not building for tomorrow. 
we're, we're building for our parish to grow into something for the next five to 10 to 20 years. So I, I just need us to think about our children, our grandchildren, about those 506 baptisms over the last four years. Um, so I would be a little worried about like trying to save money to scale back and then we build a building that we're gonna be frustrated in five years that it's too small. Um, well, we could afford it then, but um, I think the primary need is does it serve our needs? Um, that's, that's my thought. Um, what percentage of the pledge money has come from outside donations or outside of our parish? Um, well, I, I know that might be hard for, um, to figure out. I mean, I know that a million dollars came out from Stellar. He's, he's not in our parish, very generous donor. Um, we, we have been so, it's been so beautiful and amazing, the generosity that has come from this project. Um, really hard to, hard to answer that. Um, we, we've had some generous donors who, who love what we do, and they kind of come in. It's hard to know. Um, I, I just find it hard to answer that question. Um, Maybe our Cherie or Robert can, I don't know if we can get like a, yeah, Stuller's the big donor. Um, we haven't had that many that I can think of that are outside of our parish. Um, we, we have, we've solicited um, like, like BO, like BO Corporation. Uh, they've given us some money. So that would be like um, historic grants and stuff. My tour, my tour guide uh, went to the Holy Land and he dropped 5,000. Um, I told him about the project. He's like, I love it. I believe it. So I carried it from Israel. I carried $5,000. That was beautiful. Um, where will the 1.7 million shortfall come from? Uh, new money from parishioners, savings, diocesan loan. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, all of that, if, if for whatever reason uh, we... Uh, Let's just say we would exhaust, for just for argument's sake, we would exhaust all of our um, our savings. Then we would we would have to go to the par the diocese to get a loan, um, and they offer us a loan at a pretty good rate, like 3.5 um, interest right now, and that's pretty fixed. So we would have to go uh, to the diocese for a loan. Can there be a capacity reduction uh, with possible possible add-ons down the road? So this would be like more of like a, a phased approach, maybe. Um, Capacity reduction, again, I think I might have answered that. Um, possibility of add-ons down the road. We talked about that. I, I think the, the problem we're going to run into, which is a problem we have run into, is um, the argument is I think things are getting more expensive, more expensive. And as you like choose the phase approach, the more phases you get to, what you're going to do is end up spending more money down the road while you wait um, versus like kind of spending it now, which seems like a hurt now, but hindsight, when you look back, um, you actually would have saved money. I know my finance guys would say that. Steve Gardas has given me the, the eye. Um, designing in such a way as to add another story in the future. Um, I, I'm thinking maybe that's like going up um, we talked about that, we talked about the possibility. Um, our, our architect said the cost of the, the foundational work that would afford us the possibility of going up would be, um, it would be, we, we would not save money at all because you need to do so much foundation work to be able to have a building support another floor um, as convenient as the, the, the footprint would be to save space you would be um, costing out of yourself. That's, I believe that's what the discussion was. Uh, if, the, if the church covers the 1.6 million out of savings, what would be left? And what problem does that create for the parish? Um, the church can cover right now 1.6, um, and the church would have stuff left. What problem would that create? I, I guess it would just give us a little less of a buffer given any uh, emergency that would happen on in the future. Um, uh, what's the total on savings? Yeah, right now we have $2.25 million in savings, and, and the deficit is $1.65. Um, so we could cover it. Um, again, 
if anything would happen so catastrophic that we would exhaust our, like, let's just say, I'm not sure what would happen, but um, something would happen, and we would exhaust our savings, the diocese will always cover us. They will always offer us a loan at like 3.5 interest. So we're never going to get in a spot where we can't move forward or we can't cover what we need or we can't move. The diocese will always uh, work with us. So um, there's no emergency that, that they won't back us up for unless it's like catastrophic, like I don't like a Lake, Char- like a Lake Charles situation where everyone's in the same situation and I'm really not sure what they're doing now. Uh, what are the plans to set, what are, the, oh, what are the plans to get the congregation more financially involved? Um, I love this question. Um, I'm always nervous um, to ask. I- I'm nervous to talk about money. Um, I will tell you, when we did do, we had, um, we did a preaching series uh, called Money Talks. When we did do that series uh, about a, a year, year and a half ago, um, we did see an uptick in offertory. Um, I was very nervous given that talk, um, but I think it led people uh, to think and to pray and to give. Um, what are the, I just want to read it again. What are the plans to get the congregation more financially involved? Um, Great question. Uh, we, we've recently hired Miss Cherie Prince. Where's Miss Cherie? Um, Cherie was with us earlier. I think her, her, her they might have some basketball games. Her daughter's playing basketball. Um, we, we hired uh, Miss Cherie Prince to kind of help us uh, primarily in fundraising and, and to, uh, there she is, she's back there. Um, Miss Cherie Prince to kind of put together a plan to kind of um, not only communicate to our present parishioners, but uh, maybe. Um, our alumni and different things to let them know what's happening, what, what's going on. Um, some of you actually um, got a letter from her or from me through her uh, to be here tonight. So we definitely are working with a plan to try to solidify um, just more of a mentality of um, stewardship and accountability that, that this is our place and, and the kids, grandkids, uh, or our future. So we do have some steps. Um, to give concrete things, uh, would love your feedback on that. Um, would love uh, some of you maybe to come up in front of the congregation and, and share maybe your testimony of giving and how God has blessed you with that. I know when I do talk to people, um, they say, it is amazing. When I was scared to death to give 10%, um, but when I did, God provided and God took care of me. And I will gladly, with with a little trembling, gladly share people how God takes care of us. Um, how, how much was initially collected during capital campaign with the diocese? Uh, if a partial space is built, can youth use multi-purpose space? Um, first one, um, right now we have three, what do we have, 3,400? How much do we have in a capital campaign so far? 30, 350, 330, something like that, 330. So again, we allocated 250 for the youth house. The rest of the money we said would go into um, an endowment for um, continuing um, missionary work, like continuing the, um, what do we call it? Like evangelization, like an endowment for evangelization in the parish, future evangelization. So, um, so if a partial space is built, can the youth use the multi-purpose space? Um, I think to answer that question, just to make it clear, uh, since 2016, our primary, well, I guess, our primary purpose is a space for the youth. Um, so um, I guess if we would build a multi-purpose building, our youth could use it. I just want to... Um, maybe remind everyone um, the beautiful joy and enthusiasm of high school kids. Um, We certainly want to create a space that they can call their own. Um, We want them to be free. We want them to have fun. Um, We want pool tables and we want foosball and we want... um, 
th- their spaces are messy. And, and what often, ha- what can happen is um, if we build a really nice place, I find sometimes we're going to start to compete for their space and we're going to get mad that they're messing up this beautiful, pretty space that we created. Um, so we can, but we're going we're gonna to have the competition of when they come, we have to almost, my, my team is going to have to transform that space to make it youth friendly. And then we're going to have to pick up that space and we're going to have to clean it up to make a, a nice space for whatever the next event is. And then we're going to have to clean up that space. And then it begins to tax our team, our staff. And then we're kind of running into a very similar situation that we have in the PLC. We're constantly turning it over um, and it's a big taxing on our team. Um, and I, I just, I guess it is a possibility. Um, those are my kind of reasons maybe against it. With the economy and the world in such a downslide, why do we have to have such a grand building? Everyone has, everyone has to cut corners, give up vacations, home improvements. Uh, we can build a smaller building. Uh, we cannot give you more money. Um, totally understand. Uh, that's why we're having this conversation. That's why we're here. Um, you know, if, if we're taxed out, then totally get it. Um, totally, uh, I want that feedback. Um, I don't think it would serve us well, again, to, to downsize and build a smaller building um, because, again, it wouldn't really serve the purpose of growth. Um, so uh, I, he- I hear you, though. I, I said it out loud. Uh, we cannot give you more money. Um, wh- whoever shared that, I appreciate that. Um, Question, current kitchen in the PLC. Maybe upgrade, so upgrade the PLC. Um, or reclaim youth office and nursery for, for small groups. Um, I can go a couple of ways here. Um, I'll maybe read into this question. So current kitchen, PLC upgrade. So maybe if we upgrade the PLC, maybe we can use our present PLC um, like we would uh, the building if we um, have a more functional kitchen because we really don't have um, it's usable but we don't use it all that much could we get by I guess we could get by again we're gonna we're gonna worry about the space the space issue we can't get past the space we can create a more functional kitchen um, we're just gonna have a really good kitchen um, in a space that we're gonna outgrow um, reclaim the youth office and nursery for small groups. Um, once we do move um, the youth, if, if we would build the youth house, when we build the youth house, we're going to move. Um, you may not know it in PLCC in the Paris Life Center, we have claimed that room. It's like a youth room. Um, if any of you'd like to go check it out and, and see what what kind of a space we're trying to create. There's sofas, there's uh, that basketball game, uh, there's table tennis, there's video games. There's just a space where it feels like they can feel like home. Um, Totally took over that room. Um, Yes, we'll be able to reclaim that room for parish purposes, whether it's small groups or or what have you. So um, things will be changing if we build some additional space. It It will alleviate the pressure we have on the Parish Life Center. Um, What are the plans, if any, um, for repairing, replacing the roof? Okay, so second question on the roof. And then, will this be part of the One Heart campaign? Um, I will answer that, I promise. Would it not be slightly cheaper to go vertical with the building? Um, Two-story, I think we answered that. Square footage on the first floor, so reduce, maybe reduce the footprint go vertical. Uh, We talked about that. It just wouldn't be, we wouldn't be saving money. Uh, What are the plans to raise the monies? Um, Would would love um, to enter into that conversation. So two people has asked that question. I would love for you to be on the, um, did you write this question? Okay. So Chuck and Misty have been working their tails off uh, to raise money, but you have two people in the congregation. It wasn't you? So it's two other people besides y'all that want to help raise money. Super excited about that. Um, Misty and Chuck, 
Congratulations. How many parishioners have left the parish? That's a great question. I've been asking that question too. Um, unfortunately, when people leave the parish, they, most of the time, they don't call us and say, hey, I'm leaving, uh, take my name off the registry. So I know people um, have left the parish uh, and they've gone to other places, but um, it's really hard for us um, to keep track of people who have left, simply because that's just not a practice. A few people have called and said, um, by the way, I'm moving, uh, I'm going to like West Texas, I'm going to Houston because of the oil field. Uh, please take me off your records. But um, good question I've asked. It's really hard to know because um, sometimes we don't see people for a while and then all of a sudden they pop up and like, hey, like welcome back. Well, we've been in, you know, we've been traveling been in Utah, we've, you know, been doing this, or um, just various things, so it's kind of hard to sit. Yeah, so I know those were the ones written down. Maybe that answered your questions. I know there's probably some questions that you didn't get answered. I can go ahead and answer the, the ceiling question, but I don't want to, um, I don't want to, do I have any, any more questions about the building that we didn't answer? Hold it close, like to your mouth. The question I have is, first off, starts out with the operating budget that we, the, the operating budget, current operating budget. Is our um, collections covering our current operating budget? Okay. They are? And yes, they, they are, yes. Okay, and how much of that current operating budget goes into our savings? I'm gonna let, um, Robert, or Chuck answer percentage that? Percentage-wise, some of it going into savings, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Yes. Um, when I got here, um, we had $1.2 million in savings, and now we're at 2.25 in savings. So after a period of six years, we've dumped, um, is that a million dollars in savings? 10%? Okay. Um, Goes the reason the I'm asking the question is if we use the savings or some of the savings, we will eventually replenish some of our savings, right? And if you have 2.25 and you need 1.65, that leaves you 600000 in savings currently for emergencies. So to be honest with you, Father, I'll look you in the eye and tell you, you need to go ahead and just build a darn thing. Okay. Yeah, I, think, I, I appreciate that. Part of, part of, yeah, part of the conversation, I guess part of the conversation that I maybe I need you all to hear is um, our, our current operating uh, budget is functioning off of offertory. Um, and and we, we, we redo our budget every year. Um, but what, what I need to be assured of is that, um, that people don't start taking out of the offertory like to put into the One Heart campaign, which I don't see that has happened, but certainly that would put us in a bind, right? Um, so uh, right now, if everything stays the same, if everyone honors their pledges, um, that would be the situation. Uh, we'd be, have 600 left, and if people continue to give, and, and again, I think your question was, those new families that are coming in, if we begin to educate them, and we begin to ask and get them on board with offertory, our offertory should slowly begin, like, off the should continue to rise because new families are, are joining the parish, right? You have to hold it really, really close. Okay, I just wanted to ask, uh, what, what percent participation do we have from the congregation on the One Heart campaign? I'm gonna let, uh, that's always like a floating 15, so, um, we, so the number up here is 15% of, of the congregation is 1-5, one, one five, 15%, like below 20%. Which, uh, the fact that you're here probably means you are in that 15%. So I just want to thank you all for carrying the load. Um, I, I, I know... The, the load is heavy, as in everything. 20% uh, of the people 
um, really kind of give you 80%, and I know you're part of that 20, and well, you're part of the 15. Uh, that's the new number, right? The new number is 15. So thank you all for, for being a part of that and really carrying the load. I'm deeply appreciative. Um, uh, other questions? Quick question. Um, I have two things. First of all, I'd like to say I agree with the gentleman back here. We need to build it. Second thing is we, I agree with the gentleman in, in the back that we do need to build it with the funds we have. I think we, we can do this. This parish has been very good about that. The second question I had was uh, how much with the money we have currently, how much of the building could we build? And could we leave some parts blank and finish them later with, with fundraising and so on? Okay, so, um, so, so the, the question was, how much of the building can we build with the funds that we have? And, and, right? Um, everything you saw, um, the, we can build the entire building um, with the parking lot, with the drop-off, with the covered um, walkway. We can build all of that with the funds that we have and including our, our savings. We would dip into our savings. So we can build the whole thing. We would not... Oh, without the savings. Um, yeah, yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, so just to repeat the question, um, can we build, like, um, if we s just, just use the 3.5, how much of the building could we build and maybe just kind of wait, build parts of it, build parts of it? I'm looking at the architects. I'm getting. Like in other words, I think the question is, can we maximize the 3.5 and just build as much as we can for 3.5 and then maybe raise some more funds later? Is it feasible? Yeah. I think about the only thing we can kind of phase in, if you will, without disrupting what he's talking about. I think the main building, because it's all one huge building, the multi-purpose and youth house, it kind of is what it is. It, 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 it's all in or none. Uh, I, I think the only things we can really phase in, and correct me if I'm wrong, would be the covered drive-through and then the walkway. Um, agreed. But that, that would be the only thing that's separate from the building that could be done separately. I'm not proposing it by any means. Um, but I think to answer your question, that's really the only two options that'd be. I don't think it's that much, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I think that's less than four or 500,000, yes. Yeah, and, and again, I think what my finance guys are saying is, Father, if um, you can't, as much as you want to mentally escape it, you can't escape the fact that things are just gonna get more expensive. So like the argument is like bite the bullet now and you're actually gonna save in the long run because um, our, our, if we would have to, like we have the money or if we'd have to borrow, the interest that we're borrowing is gonna be cheaper than the inflation rate that comes. So you're, you're, you're gonna constantly be behind, right? And, and also, and also um, if we, if we kind of break up the building and like maybe if you're thinking maybe well if we just build the youth house and then come back and build the multi-purpose um it would i thought that would actually save money but we would have to build exterior walls whereas before there were interior walls which would be more expensive and then you're coming back and then you're adding and then you have cracks you have disconnects in the roof that you're patching and then in five years you're like why did we make two roofs instead of one and all the drama that comes with that. Guess all hands. Coming. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so we have the money in the savings account to build the building. Great, right? My question is, after the building is built, do we have the funds, either from offertory, savings, whatever, to maintain it? Electricity, um, any kind of leaks. You know, even though it's a brand new build, you might have those cracks. You might have plumbing issues. You know things of that nature. So is that been put into a budget already? Like thought out process? Yeah, okay, it, yeah, insurance is gonna go up and maybe we might have to hire 
we talked about that we have to hire another um, member of janitorial staff just to kind of to keep it up. So you're talking about salary, you're talking about electricity. Um, we, we, we do have the money. Yeah, the exercise was done because we do have money that we're putting into savings that that money certainly would be looked at um, to provide for those um, added expenses. And we would have to, if we begin to get in a pinch, we'd have to just go back to our budget and say, okay, we, as much as we like having meals at all of our events, like that's a, that's a nice perk. We're going to have to start cutting things out. Like, okay, that's an extra expense that we'll have to just pull back. Um, as much as we like doing this, we're going to have to pull back. And so we just have to get a little tighter on our budget. Um, but the mission, um, would not be, um, compromised. So we would make it work. Um, Yeah, sure. Like the little things, like I hear what you're saying, like the roof, the ceiling, the the kneelers. Like, man, we're talking about five, you know, five point one million, and then we, we we haven't even replaced the kneeling cushion. So, are we taking care of the day to day things in our parish that need to be addressed? Are we overlooking those things while we're just looking at the big shiny thing? Um, in our operating budget, we every year we have allocated, uh, you know, certain we we pick we can't do everything at once, so we pick certain projects. Um, the, the kneelers, I'm, I'm starting to hear more and more people talk about the kneelers. So one of the, one of the kneelers is going to be something we're going to address. The roof we have addressed. Um, the, the leaking that you see is f from a couple of the storms that have come through uh, over the past year, year or two. Really, some of the newer leaking is like this one, right? These two right there, that's new. We actually had a roofer come in to look at it. He did a patchwork. Um, he said we he did not, in his professional opinion, think we needed to replace the entire roof. Um, that would have been uh, like in the in the 80 range. I don't even know what he said, but he said, "Look, we can, I can, do, I can patch it, and it'll be um, good to go." We have some new leaking in the the back, um, like behind here in the back, and we actually are replacing that entire roof on the back. And so we're addressing the we're putting a 20 year roof on there went through the parish council, went through the finance council. So we are addressing that. I mean, some of the other things, the little things that we're addressing is um, a confessional. So those of you who um, come to confession, you know that we have steps. I've been just kind of, tr you laughing at her? She does come. She does come. So, um, so. <laughs> So just the confessional. So I, you know, that it's a dream. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a need. It's a want. I'd love to have a confessional without steps to go in, um, but we can put that in our operating budget because it's a small thing, uh, ten grand, fifteen grand. Um, but we are taking care of the day-to-day -day things in our operating budget that need to be addressed. Yes, um, it's a big. It's a big thing. Listen, I'm ready to do it. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm ready. I, I have my spot. Mr. Gary has been sit under the weather. It, I, I met it with him a year ago. We have plans. I'm letting him get his steam back, we'll have a meeting next week, Wednesday, and we're going to move forward. Talk about the confessional without steps, like, because um, it's kind of dangerous. I did see, um, uh, uh, yep, yeah, sorry. I haven't heard you say anything, but on the financing, couldn't we do half? And then maybe some kind of early payment? I mean... Say, say more about half. What do you mean? Well, in other words, you got $2.2 in the savings. Mm -hmm. You need 1.6, barring half from the diocese. And yeah, great question. The diocese actually will not let us borrow any money until we have exhausted our savings. That's a, that's a rule they have.
red shirt. Okay, Mr. B. Yes. I'm asking a couple of technical questions yep. here. Uh, is Chad here? Yes. Chad, how many square feet of building are we talking about here today? I haven't heard that yet yet. Eleven five. Eleven five. Yes, sir. Okay. So what we're talking about here is a eleven thousand five hundred square feet of building, and the original price was around five million. So we're talking about four hundred thousand dollars, four hundred dollars per square foot of building cost. Correct? Does that cover? Uh, does that cover canopies? Canopies? Does that cover the canopies? Yes. Yes. Uh, does that cover uh, the kitchen cost? No. That, that's the extra funds that will have to be in. That was the FF&E rate. Yeah, correct? Okay. Uh, if I understand this correctly, this, this complex is going to go where the green area is behind the church and between the graveyard and parking lot? Yes, sir. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. If you're talking about 12,000 square foot of building, that green area is only roughly, I, my, my, if my numbers are correctly, uh, about 7,000 square feet of green area. Where is the 12,000 square foot going to fit? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, we're, um, I guess I had that drawing. I don't know if that drawing's going to help us. Um, so um, you can see Railroad Street is, is to the right of our screen. Yes. Um, so uh, if you can maybe, um, let's see, the, it looks like a four-wheel trail on the top of the screen. That's the existing um, gravel road. Um, so if you would just kind of imagine... Um, well, I'm going to be doing a great service. At, at, at the tip top of your screen is basically the cemetery. Okay. Um, the, the parking at the bottom of the screen is, is not going to change for the most part. Like that parking is what we see um, presently. It's going to change a little bit um, configuration. Um, we're going we're gonna to move a little closer to the church. Um, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to lose a little bit of my backyard. Okay. Um, well, well, what I'm speaking of, the green area. Yes, sir. Okay. We're, we're going to take, we're going to consume the whole the green, green area, area, the entire green area. Yes, sir. The entire green area. Plus? Plus all of the, um, the space between the green the area, lane area and the church. So the parents are going to be able to, um, they'll be able to make a loop. They come through like they normally do, and they'll be able to drive like through the covered parkway, and they'll be able to drive through all the way to the back, that, that kind of four-wheel trail. There will be a loop all the way around. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well. There will be a U-drive because we were considering the St. Cecilia parents drop-off. But that's all going to be concrete now and not that gravel. Okay. I'm still saying that the actual green area is really only about six to seven thousand square feet. Sure. That's all it is. I'm leaning in on the experts. Uh, it's going to be fun when they try to build that building. On, um, I'm leaning in on you, Chad, because you had engineers come and measure. So the drop-off is okay. going to move towards yeah. the church. Okay. So in essence, what you're telling me is that the square footage of the building is not 12,000 square feet. Huh? Yes. 
I don't. I'm tr I'm yeah. trusting my engineers on the measurements. I did well, not go out there and a, measure it. From a technical yes, standpoint, okay, then you're consuming some of the parking area, some of the drive area, and some of the most probably uh, outside parking area. And you're going all the way to the street, which is railroad. Am yes, I sir. correct? Yes, sir. We're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna remove a, a couple of parking spots, but we're going to add 36 new parking spots back there that aren't. Where are you going to find them? Um, yeah, he, uh, Chad, Chad will go through the drawings with you. If you kind of look at the, the space between the building I, and the I, church. I, I can't read it. Oh, sorry. It. Yeah. I but, can't read it. That's okay. Okay. But th those, that's all new parking that doesn't exist right now. This is only from a technical standpoint. Yeah, sure. I don't see it. And I, and it, I won't, I, because you're only speaking of one building or two buildings or three buildings? Uh, j just just one large building all under that, that's one roof. That's what I thought it was. Okay. Yes, sir. Because that's what I understood. I, I wanted clarification. Okay. Would, would love to, if you, if you want to come look at the drawings, Mr. MP, would love to sit down with you and have me, Chad. I, I probably won't be able to help you, but Chad can help you. Okay. Any, anything else? Okay. Um, let's see. You came. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Um, so I have three kind of questions about the numbers. Um, does that cost include, like, architecture? architectural and engineering fees yes uh, if you looked at the soft cost soft cost and miss ff &E and miscellaneous costs the architectural fees uh, that we have paid already are in there right yep and it includes because if the cost is going up and the architects are paid on person and construction their fees will then also go up. So does that include the additional cost for the? Chad's considering doing it for free as well to oh, the, the extra. That's why he's here. If we all look at him long enough. And this also includes all drainage work, subsurface, whatever engineering drainage work that needs to be done. Okay, and how much of this is pledged but not in hand? We, in hand, we have 66%. Sorry. Uh. Okay, so 66%. So the 33% that's not currently in hand is just based on parishioner pledges. Yeah, so we did a three-year pledge. Um, so, so when are those funds going to be collected by? Yeah, towards the end, um, what do we have, one more year or a year and a half of pledge? Yeah, it all depends when they started. I mean, everybody started at different times, three-year pledge. Some of them were a two-year pledge. Some of them were one-year pledge. So. so will the church then have to front those dollars that are not yet in hand but are pledged for the future? So is that additional dollars that are going to then come out of savings that may not be replenished if people don't fulfill their pledge? Yeah, I mean, um, I'll let... Yeah, I mean, that's always a risk for any fundraiser. Absolutely. Uh, but so far, we've been blessed. People have been keeping up with their commitment. Uh, we had sent letters out not too, too long ago, refreshing everybody's memory about it. And a lot of people just wrote checks just to pay it off altogether. And that's kind of helped us to get to that number. Um, but that is always a risk. Uh, the good thing is also this is going to take a year to build. So we have a whole nother year to, to get pledges in of people pledging. So that's going to almost encompass the whole three-year pledge cycle, if you will. Good questions, nothing else. That's it? Okay. Thank you. Um, anything else? Let me share it. Once the building is complete, 
will it require new employees? You have new people that you need to run it? For instance, like, will somebody be there full time to watch the youth group? Somebody's going to be on hand to tend to the, the supervise the youth group? Do you have to hire somebody permanent sure. for that? Yeah, we, uh, we presently have a full time youth minister. Um, so probably the youth base, um, just because of safe environment, I mean, we, we won't have to, unless our youth group continues to grow, and then basically our, our one person might not be enough to attend to all of them. So we may, the more we grow, the more bodies we have, and the more, he, he's really good at, at surrounding himself with a team. So we all, safe environment, we always have to have uh, at least um, two adults anytime we have a youth gathering. So um, we have a lot of people in here who give of their time generously. Um, so we have leveraged a lot of um, the gifts of people's time in our parish so that we don't have to hire additional people and they're basically ministers, so to speak. Um, we do anticipate probably having to hire one, as I said, like a custodial staff, someone to just keep the building clean as we use things uh, just the cleanliness of it. We're already, because we're using our facilities more than ever, um, we're using that PLC more than ever. We're using the hospitality room. We're going up and down those stairs. Uh, those of you who have maybe been in the PLC and the dirt, cleanliness. So the spaces that we've had to clean that we never have had to clean before is really taxing our team. And so we probably will have to hire one more custodial staff and we're we're prepared for that. But as of right now, that's probably all I foresee um, for that building. Hopefully that helps. Do we, have enough money coming in? Uh, do we have enough money coming in for all this? I think that goes to the, the operating budget. Um, we do have enough as long as people continue um, to give as they have been given. Uh, you guys have been incredibly generous. And I think the challenge for us, I think what was said on the court is how do we get maybe people who aren't giving to give. Um, growth is not our problem. Maybe it's, um, it's being educated in um, like participating in a holistic way, like participating, being here physically, but also contributing to the upkeep of our facilities. So we're growing in bodies. Um, we can maybe do a little better education on growing in offertory. So. Mention uh, on on the website you have three phases here, and one of the phases, phase three. I don't know if it, the website needs to be upsta updated. It says uh, Quarloff renovation. I mean, is that in that budget to do the Quarloff? Yeah, great, great, great question. Um, um, or can we take that money out and put it towards the building? <laughs> take it out of the regular fund. <laughs> well, hey, hey, let, I know. Let the let the church pay for that. You know. <laughs> so um, when we initially, okay, listen, when we initially um, did the needs, when we did the needs phase, um, we put together all of our needs and we did have some additional needs that are not being met by this present phase. Um, if you remember some of those or uh, we talked about building some, um, some brick structural awnings that would connect the sides of the North X to the PLC and the administrative building. So when we walk outside in the rain, you know, when it's raining outside and we want to go in the PLC for Donut Sunday, everyone gets wet. So part of all of our needs phase was we wanted to put that. Well, that is not included in this project just because we can't do everything. We talked about getting an architect up in our choir loft. Um, at the time we had, our choir was busting out of the seams and we, the choir had vocalized at one of the town hall meetings. We need some space, like we need this to be addressed. And so we were gonna get an architect up there to figure out some space. With COVID, since COVID, we've had um, some adjustments in our choir numbers. And so I'm not saying the need's going away, but presently it's not as pressing as it was. Um, the, the choir may slowly come back full force and in addition, and so we're going to have to address the choir at some point. But right now, in the pro proposed project, um, the, the reconstruction or the finding space in our choir loft is not part of that project. So that phased, um, there are still some, like, there's another phase 
down the road. Uh, we're just trying to be meet the, the most immediate need. I'm not saying the choir is not an immediate a need, but immediate with this building project, um, it would be like a phase two. And it's not included in the, the numbers. Okay. And did you mention a while ago the kitchen equipment, was it included in the in the, uh, budget? Or you gotta have to add the equi equipment? That's in the FF&E, the kitchen equipment. So the, the, that it is number. F it is in that? Okay. Yep. All right, I, I missed it. And then as uh, far as like the, can, uh, the main part of the building can be rented out for weddings and stuff too or you know that's a hurdle we haven't jumped through um Make some I, revenue. yeah th that's an option um i've talked to different pastors that have building projects it's a double-edged sword um it, it, i heard someone say insurance it kind of seems like a great idea we can recoup some of our funds however you ha we have to look at the bigger projects so you start having um wedding receptions here and so they're they're coming in they're wrecking our place and they're drinking and they're um, just leaving beer cans all over the place what that means is we have to hire people to clean all that up they they mess with our stuff they break some av i know there's deposits but and also what happens is we built that that building to serve the needs of our parish and so we start filling up our calendar with all these extra things outside of the parish and then we're angry because we can't use our building that we built for ourselves because we filled up all of our calendar and we're having to hire an extra person just to run the cleanliness of our building and now all of a sudden like we're running a hall and I, I think sometimes the the money we might make doesn't uh, make up for what we're losing when we rent it so we're just we haven't made a, a hard call on that Sure. We, we certainly, we didn't want to cross that hurdle until we kind of have a building and we commit to it, you know. That'll be, that'll be part of the conversation. Good questions. Um, thank you. So have we had any other plans with our two and a half million dollar savings, such as if we don't do this, it's only sitting there for a disaster to strike? It's the kneeling cushions aren't coming out of it, the roof on, that's not coming out of it, that's all coming out of our op, our op budget, right, year to year, right? So we have two and a half million dollars that's sitting there waiting for a disaster to happen. But we know if we spend it and we have no money, then we'll get, and we have a disaster, then the parish will loan us money for that disaster. The diocese. The diocese, I'm sorry, thank you, the diocese, right? Mm -hmm. Unless there's a big catastrophic Right, so our only risk is if that we have some huge catastrophic event that wipes out the entire diocese. Other than that, we can spend the money, get the ninth use house, and if something happens, we can get the church fixed through the diocese. That's a, that's that, a, that's 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 a lot of reward for Looking a little at my bit finance of risk. Guys. A lot of reward, a little bit of risk. Um, anybody else? If, if we're adding the 12,000 square foot of building, I'm going back to that same situation, okay? What you have here with the church, your office complex, the PLC, new and old, you have roughly 14 to 15,000 square foot of building. But now, so your operation cost will actually almost double with the new complex because you're adding 12,000 square feet mm -hmm. of building complex. Yes, sir. Am I, am I assuming the right situation? We know what I'm our gonna, cost is here. I'm going to lean in on my numbers, guys. So yes, basically, sir. where you are, you're actually doubling your operation cost. Your income has not increased to that degree as I see it today. Am I making myself clear? Yeah, so the, um, so the, I guess the, the operate, yes, so you're, you're challenging, is the, is the operating cost gonna override our okay. ability, our ongoing offertory and our ability to, okay. to fund the project? You know, um, I, I, I don't know the, the particular I, numbers. I know that's all we've been talking about here. Sure. Is, is cost, okay? But you're still going to have that 
you're still going to have that because you have to have more people, you have to have more, you might say, facility to take care of all of this, mm -hmm. uh, such as, such as, uh, you might say, people in, in your office. Okay, so basically, it's going to happen. If, if you do this complex you yeah we need to all we listen we all need to be on board with this in a sense of we like we need to continue to support our parish like we have been supporting um i've been right. here for six years um well, the the offertory years, has Roger, for six years you haven't increased your funds from the original 1.3 that we had before you got here so basically you've only increased that fund what two or three hundred thousand the um the roughly yeah the, the save the savings since I've been here the savings we probably put about on average two hundred thousand in the in the savings account each year so when I got here Father Louis left um, one point two in case you should have an additional one point two million about about a million yes sir we have about a million a, a little over a million in savings extra well as I know it and I was there you had one you when you came in. We had roughly 1.4 million, 1.3 to 1.4 million. Yeah, now we have 2.25 million. You're right. Yeah. What's that? Uh, okay. <laughs> um, any, any, any more questions? Um, I've, been, I've enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, um, am I so her, her, her question was, um, well, so she said, am I not concerned that, I said it's important that everyone's on board, am I not concerned that maybe only 15% of the parish is on board? Um, I'll start by saying the, the need is, is not going away. Um, our growth is happening, and so um, our our need to respond um, is still there. I am definitely concerned. I'm not so concerned about um, whether those 85, I don't think the 85% of people who are not giving, um, I just don't know if, if maybe we aren't communicating the needs well. Um, if if we're dealing with a population who is is like, um, over mortgaged and they um, again we're probably there's a lot of young families that are coming into our parish and so um, evangelically when it comes to a church um, it is a wonderful opportunity for us to be ministering to these young couples and young families who are coming who to be honest with you they need a lot of love they need a lot of care and they are over invested in their houses, in their cars, and they have no idea what it means to give to the church. Sure. Well, I think we could do a better job. We could do a better job of communicating needs and, and asking. I would be totally open to maybe some suggestions on how to get a greater um, population invested in the project. Um, uh, would, would absolutely welcome. Uh, it is a concern of mine. Um, if I've brought it up several times in the parish, Chuck keeps telling me I need to do it more. I need to do it more. Um, certainly this will be an opportunity um, to go to the parish and say, hey, here's where we are. 15%. Um, I'm very grateful for the 15%, but it'll be another opportunity for me to call out the 85% in creative ways. Um, so I would certainly welcome any f creative ways to get them. Um, it is a concern. I'm just, um, th there's some creative ways to do it that maybe we haven't thought of. So do you have a percentage of families that actually participate in church? I mean, we have that many families who've joined the parish, but there's probably a lot of people who, they join the parish, but they never come to mass. They never join any of the groups. They never participate in any way in the Catholic community here. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, I mean, I'm sure it's not 85%, but is it, you know, is there 20% of people that you could say they don't, they're parishioners in, uh, I would say it's probably, it's, it's greater than, it's, yeah, it's greater than 20%. In a typical parish, I mean, this is just national statistics, in a typical parish, you probably, of the people who consider themselves Catholics or 
have signed up for a parish, you probably have 25 to 30 percent participation, period. So, um, it, and that's across the board. But, right. But, um, some people don't participate. You're actually right. Some people can't afford it, you know, which, which is a percentage. And then we have a we had a, a decent amount of people who actually said, after I'm done pledging for the Centennial campaign, I can redirect my funds here. Uh, some people have said, you know, you asked me for the Centennial campaign, then you came and did your preaching series, which I increased my, you know, weekly donations. Um, so th th there's, there's a lot of different factors, but yes, there's still a big number on the other side of it, but it's not 85. You know, there, there are a lot of things like you say, participation. Centennial campaign was a big part of a lot of people's concerns of when that peels off, I'll just redirect it over here. I can, you know, keep it going, just redirect the funds, so. Hold it close to your mouth. Okay, so all of, our, we appreciate the Q&A. Thank you all very much for being transparent. The question I have now is, are we going to put it to a parish vote, whether or not they want the building or not the building, or like, how is this going to get resolved now? Yeah, great question. So, so where do we go from here? Um, so again, a reminder, um, parish council, finance council, um, we, uh, I put a lot of trust um, in um, representatives from this community who are far more skilled than I am. Um, finance council. Um, Chuck and Steve and the, and the rest of the crew, uh, they are constantly crunching numbers. They are um, evaluating. We're going back and forth. Parish Council, so th this process, it, we go to the architects, we get some numbers, we go to the Finance Council, we discuss it. The Finance Council offers suggestions to the Parish Council. The Parish Council suggests it and they offer to me. And then we go, we, we keep doing that round and round. They have already said, Father, it's in our best interest. The needs aren't going away. We have the funds go with it. Um, and so kind of the, the decision was kind of on the table. We recommend on behalf of the parish to go forward. Um, again, I wanted to include all of us in here and to, I, I want to listen. I, I said, if, is, is there some, something that I don't see that we don't see that maybe would be brought up in this meeting that would be a glaring obstacle for us to go forward? Um, you guys have all heard the feedback. You guys have all heard the questions. I really don't hear anything glaring to keep us from moving forward. Um, there, there's some, some questions, um, but we have the money. Um, the need's not going anywhere. Um, so how we would move forward here is to be as responsible as we can, um, working with our architect, working with the engineering firm, trying to get that number as small as possible to where we don't compromise the need um, and the building is as functional and aesthetically pleasing that fits our rest of our architectural plan. And then we go forward. Um, I mean, that's, that's what I've, I'm hearing from tonight. Um, so if, if the question would be, um, where do we go forward from here? Um, I, I think I've heard, um, I think your answers, your questions have been answered. I haven't heard anything glaring to keep us from moving forward. Um, and and, and I, with that, I just, I say we go move forward. That's kind of what I'm, what I'm hearing. A, sh <laughs> a straw vote. I don't have any straw. Um, yeah, in, it, in, the, in the end, so in the end, it is my decision. Uh, as a pastor, um, I, I, I've, I've learned that I will, I will never be able, well, I'm learning this a lot lately. I will never be able to please everybody. Um, I, I think I give the greatest homily and um, I go into the narthex waiting for people to, um, to smile and tell me how great it was. And uh, I don't even get hugs from the little kids. Um, but then I give bad homilies and I'm, I'm hard on myself and I beat myself up and um, the, all the kids want to do is hug me and kiss me. And um, so I realize anything we do, um, it, it's not going to please everyone. Um, so I, I just want you to hear from me as your pastor. Um, I, have, I have prayed. I've 
like done all the due diligence that I can. I've leaned in on our parish council. I've leaned in on our finance council. I've leaned in on the on engineering, the architects. We have, this has been a five-year exhausting process, um, and we are trying to be as responsible as we can. Um, everybody on uh, the advisory council has really said, Father, it's not pretty. It, it's going to hurt a little bit, but if the need's not going away, we go forward with it. Um, if we're going to be a parish that um, really is living the gospel, and if our mission is really encountering Jesus and becoming missionary disciples, um, then the mission goes first, and, and God will provide. So um, I truly believe that. In your comments, um, I hear valid concerns, questions that we've kind of addressed. Um, and so I know this decision might not please everyone, um, but I do believe and I am convinced that it's the best answer for the needs of our parish now. Um, and I think it will serve us well, and, and, you know, we'll look back and say we're glad we did it at the time that we did it. So when's it going to start? That's a great question. Um, I, I'm not sure if that was, was that your? So her question was, when's it going to start? Um, again, we are, um, we're in a wrestling match uh, with our architect. Uh, I can take him. And with our engineer... Um, on what do we want to comp like what what can we take out of the project what can we do again how can we so I, I don't have a clear answer I would like to start as soon as possible because we're aware of inflation and prices but don't want to don't want to rush in hastily but we want to start as soon as we feel comfortable I know it's I, I know we I'm coming So, yes, yeah, so um, going forward, going forward, if we are going to go forward with this project, that means we will dip into our savings. Yes, sir. Is the 5.1 a hard number? There, uh, there's, some, there's some fluctuation. That's, um, again, it may be hard in the sense of, like I said, we're going to try to reduce that number. Again, with this market, Chad will tell you, Man, if you wait another month, steel and wood could go out of the roof. You wait another month, it may go down a little bit, but the risk to wait is far greater than, um, than the commitment to choose now. So, in other words, it, as, of, as of yesterday, so those numbers were, our, we met with our contractor, I'm losing track of days, two days ago, and he was late for our meeting because he was getting numbers from his bidders. So those are real-time numbers as of two days ago. So he, he would honor those numbers. Uh, okay. Is the parking in the back going to be affected while the construction is going on? Great question. Is the parking in the back going to be affected by, while the construction is going on? Yes, but as minimally as possible. It's going to be affected. It's not an easy process. It's going to be a mess. Mr. Uh, Mayor Raybork is here, and he just had a big, had a big sigh. He's rubbing his forehead over there. Um, the, 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 the town has, um, the city of Broussard has been uh, involved in this project from the beginning. They came, they wanted to know what we were doing. One of their major, major concerns was parking. They said, look, you can't be building anything without increasing your parking. Uh, they sent someone over. They've been talking to our architects and engineers. They wanted to make sure we had adequate parking for this space because they know when we have events here in school, we're parking on the road, we're parking in the neighborhoods, we're taking up you know, restaurants and, and different things. And so they have been over, they saw the drawings, they are pleased that we, um, our numbers fit, you know, the needs of the building. I know we're sneaking up on, uh, on time. Uh, any, 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 any other kind of pressing? I guess it just, it seems like now that it's more about can we get, I guess, more, more donors involved, more, you know, opportunities, I guess. Has there been any thoughts about, like, 
naming rights to certain areas, you know, donations for the kitchen equipment, you know, things that different organizations that can help to offset some of those costs. Great question. We, we have had, we do have a list of naming rights that many of you in this room, I'm very grateful, have taken advantage of. So uh, some of your families have um, graciously given on behalf of maybe loved ones or in the name of your family. But we do have some naming rights still available for those of you who would maybe uh, like to take advantage of that opportunity. Um, that's certainly a marketing um, opportunity that uh, we can make you available, avail you of so that maybe you can uh, share that with some of your other family and maybe, you know, maybe. You yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Sure, absolutely. And, and listen, we can, I think what's coming up is we can do a better job of communicating and maybe um, getting a bigger pool. We, we can maybe do that. I'm going to lean in on Miss uh, Cherie back there. Her brain is spinning. She's taking notes. We're coming up with a game plan. Mr. Todd. I think, I don't think anybody in here is denying that, you know, uh, how important our youth is to our community. There's no doubt about that. But the underlying thing that I'm seeing that we have to have a better job of having is tonight that I noticed, and it's, it's also been weighing on me too, is the transparency of the church and the operating expenses for the church and then using our church resources for a new project, regardless of what it is, if it's for youth or for the Knights of Columbus or the Ladies Auxiliary or just a building that we need for small groups, whatever it is, as a parishioner of 30 plus years, that's always a concern of mine, you know, that, that when I hear of a, like you talked about, a shiny build of something, it's, okay, first of all, do we have the interest? Do we have enough people that are willing to get on board? You know, whether some are or some aren't, do we have enough interest in it, you know, is one. But the big one is, is are we making sure that we're communicating and are we taking care of this beautiful space that we have and making sure that we have a long range plan? Uh, you've eloquently stated that tonight that, you know, we have two point something million in, in, you know, in savings, but why not put that in the bulletin? Why not put that in the annual report of showing the parishioners the numbers, showing the parishioners the strength of the parish, show the parishioners the strength of the collection now versus previous I think if everybody had that information, I don't think you would even have to have tonight because people would have saw the strength of the church, the strength of the funds. And look, we have, we have the money, we have the numbers, and we can do these kind of projects. So it, makes, it puts people at ease knowing that those monies are there versus rumor of, you know, hey, we're using all the church's money to go build this shiny building back here. Sure. But you talked about transparency. I think it starts on Sundays in the, you know, in the bulletin or, or annually or whatnot. A, a uh, you know, um, and a financial report annually just to let everybody know where are we, where are we on track, where are we with the growth, you know, in regards to money, not in regards to how many families or how many, you know. And, and again, I'm not discounting. All that's great. I hear you, but. But as a parishioner, a vested parishioner, it's, 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 we need that information, you know, it's. Thank you, Todd. Parish annually does put that in the bulletin. I think the last one was October, just, just FYI. But it is, I think it's an annual. I do. Um, no, that's a great idea. I mean, to yeah, to expand on it other than just the bulletin. Yeah, so I, I'm definitely hearing just better communication with the public. Uh, I don't want to give Mr. Steve the mic, um, but I'm going to I'm going to speak. 
on his behalf, and I'm going to speak on Trent's behalf. They're both on the Finance Council. Um, within the past year, I have heard both of them say, um, Father, thank you. This is, this is the most transparency we've ever seen at a Finance Council meeting. I'm not putting words in their mouth, um, but like the, the detail and, and the open book. Um, and so I appreciate you guys saying that because I remember hearing that and um, like I, I think, so we've inc- improved on transparency with the finance council. I'm hearing, hey, how about bring that to, um, am I speaking out of turn? Okay, um, Ms. Monica. Thank you, Father. I'm just going to piggyback off of what this gentleman said, that um, being a parishioner for probably, I don't know, 55, 60 years, that um, the transparency in this community has always been. It's always been. And I, I believe that it's quite the experience of quite a few people in the community, the older parishioners, the experienced com- parishioners in the community with our experiences that we have had in the past with our past pastors. I'm going back to Father Kemp's, which probably 90% of the people don't know here. But what I'm saying is that our past pastors had the same challenges that you have, but we all got through it, and it was through transparency and communication. And patience, yeah, lots of it. What I've heard is that um, even though we do do, our, excuse me, if we, even though we do put our finances in the bulletin annually, um, maybe one time it it doesn't. It's not a wide enough net. If you do miss the weekend, if you're traveling, you miss it. And then, gosh, if you miss that two years in a row, then you, you've missed two years of financial updates. And so, a little more consistent. Um, is that a question? Okay. I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for tonight. I want to thank you for all the change you've navigated us through over the last six years. I want to thank you for your servant's heart that even though you don't always say things as eloquently as I think you should say them, <laughs> that your heart Please. and your love for Jesus and his church not my church, not her church, his church, that you have a desire to serve him with everything that you have. And so I am proud of you. I am grateful for you. I am sorry for all the times I challenged you and did not give you the benefit of the doubt. I am sorry for all the times I did not like your homily and I told you so. And I'm sorry for all the times I forgot to thank you when I thought they were great. But tonight, I think this was important for everyone to feel heard. But tonight I heard from you that you are our pastor. And I'm glad that through the guidance of the Holy Spirit and all these teams and all of these very smart people, um, your financial team, your parish council, that you have now come to a decision and, and I fully support you. And we will pray for success. And I think, I think you've done a great job. I think tonight is, is a wrap. Like, and I absolve you go. all of your sins in the name of the <laughs> Okay, Krista has spoken. Um, if you want to stay after uh, just to chit-chat, um, I just want to respect, uh, we're getting up on eight. I think we said six to eight. So um, thank you so much. Um, uh, with that in mind, um, hey, if you know someone who might be interested in this project and, and maybe your family and you don't know if they've contributed or they know about the growth or they know about these things that are happening in our parish, maybe share it with them. Uh, Miss Cherie is um, at the exit on the other side. Um, if you have any questions on how maybe you can help or how you can um, get involved, or I, I know there's at least two people in here who are excited about helping us fundraise. Um, Ms. Cherie would certainly uh, welcome your input and uh, how you can be a part of the solution. So thank you so much for coming. Hopefully this was helpful. God bless.